Hey everybody, um, some of y'all know me. Um, my name is Amber Nickel, and this is my husband. I'm John Lewis. And um, y'all might know me because I've been posting my story on the Save My Marriage page for probably the past year now. Um, Kimberly Holmes asked us to kind of share our testimony and what we have been through in the past two years, and also how Marriage Helper and the 911 workshop really helped um, allow us to have a 180 in terms of where our marriage was headed, which was divorce. So about two and a half years ago, um, things just started kind of getting a little hectic in our life. Um, we had had a, a newborn, um, and then we also had a one-year-old. And our one-year-old, um, right around the time of his birth, was diagnosed with a rare liver disease. And that just put a strain on our marriage. Um, it's hard enough to have a newborn and um, getting up in the middle of the night and sleepless nights and feedings and all the things that kind of come with it. And we, we loved our children, but, you know, there was just not a lot of us time, um, which comes with the territory of being parents. Um, so in the fall of 2014, John Lewis kind of started expressing that he was just unhappy. Well, I kind of just interpreted that as I'm just unhappy, not I went, I went out, I, I want a divorce. Um, he would say those things when we'd have disagreements. I would say things as well, but it never occurred to me that this was something that we would be facing. So in October of that year, he um, ended up coming home from work and telling me that he had found someone that made him happy and and ended up leaving. Um, when he left, he said that he no longer loved me, um, was not in love with me, and wanted a divorce. And of course I was devastated. I, I, I felt blindsided. Um, John Lewis did feel like he had been communicating his frustrations though. Um, regardless, it was a completely chaotic situation. It was hopeless, and I did not know what to do. And I think a lot of y'all feel that way um, because no one walks into marriage thinking that they're going to have to one day know how to stand for their marriage or save their marriage um, because no one ever makes, makes those vows. Um, you just think that you're just going to get through it. And unfortunately, at the time, that's just not how John Lewis felt. So um, about a couple weeks after uh, John Lewis left me, the pastor who married us had mentioned to my family that there was this workshop held by Joe Beam and told me that there was a 77% success rate. I, I jumped on the phone. I called them. I probably called them a couple times in the, in the same day. My, I know my mom called them, spoke to Johnny Cardwell, and just telling them of this horrific situation um, because it felt horrific to us not knowing that dozens of people call them a day with the same scenario. Um, and during this time I was asking John Lewis, you know, please go to counseling with me, please work on things. Um, I love you. I was begging, I was pleading, I was whining, I was crying, um, telling him I'll change, I'll do anything that you want, just please come back home. Not realizing that I was really making the situation worse. Even though my intentions were the greatest, it just was not the way to handle things. Um, so for 10 months, John Lewis said, I'm not going to go to the workshop. I have no interest in going to the workshop. I'm, you know, I'm going to get this divorce regardless of what you say, what you do. Nothing's going to change my mind. And so um, he left in October and in May of the following year, so 2015, he finally sat down with me. We had already gone to mediation. We had spent thousands and thousands of dollars in attorney fees, um, you know, kind of battling each other in court, um, just wasting time and money and energy. And it really needed to be focused on our children, but it just that's just not how it played out for us. So he finally sat down and said, you know, what can I do? What can we do to move this forward? I want a divorce. I'm not going to stay married to you. So I said, just again, go to this workshop. That's all I'm asking. Um, if you go, I will expedite the divorce process. And I was, I was walking out on a cliff, off a cliff, hoping that my parachute was going to open. Um, Joe and Johnny and Kimberly all said to me, Amber, we can't make promises. Um, you know, we can't promise you that 100% your marriage is going to be saved. But if you just get him here, even with his unwillingness to work on the marriage, we promise we'll do everything that we can to help facilitate that reconciliation. And at that point, I had nothing to lose. I was, I was about to be a single mom of a one-year-old and two-year-old. Um, and so before we got to the workshop, um, or before I go more into that, I'll kind of let John Lewis share what he was feeling before he left, and also during the time that he was gone, um, if, if that's okay. Yeah. So, 
kind of going back to what she said at the beginning, um, we had a lot of stresses going on in our life, and there was a lot of problems that were developing between Amber and I that just weren't working out. Uh, we had communication issues. We had issues with just resolving everyday problems with each other. And like she said, I felt like I was communicating effectively to her with what I was upset about or what I wanted to change or what needed to be done better. And, you know, that breakdown in communication led to <clears throat> even more disagreements and me wanting to get out of there faster and more. Um, I grew up in a home where, you know, things weren't always the best and where communication wasn't the best as well. And I didn't want those issues to be issues that our kids saw as well. And to me, the problem I saw was I didn't want my kids to grow up in a home where they were seeing the same things that I saw when I was a kid. And so my response to that was, I got to get out of there. I got to do my own thing, you know, getting a separation and um, kind of just being off on our own. Mom separate from dad was the best way to kind of protect our kids from that situation. Not understanding that that just causes more problems. Um, once I left, uh, I made that clean break. Didn't want to have anything to do with her. Didn't want to talk to her. Uh, <laughs> he was, changed his, sorry, real quick. He changed, <laughs> he changed his phone number the day after he left. I did. <laughs> he, um, I, I did try to call the, actually I did call the other woman several times. Um, not to yell at her, but I was saying, you know, please, you know, let my husband be. He has these beautiful children. I sent her like family pictures, which are all no-nos. Um, and he would only communicate with me via email. Sorry. I did. <laughs> well, once I, we had so many, what I felt like were so many issues when we were together that once I was able, in my mind, to make that separation and get away, I was like, I'm not going to open up any lines of communication anymore. I'm not going to make myself available to those issues anymore. And that just caused more problems for the both of us and for trying to co-parent when we had that separation going on. Um, it made it much more difficult to get together to... I don't know, just make everyday decisions about the kids, visitation, all that kind of good stuff, and just compounded all the issues that we already had going on. It made me just kind of stew in my own thoughts, um, stew about what I was perceiving to be wrongs that she was committing against me, and just kind of letting it fester and fester and fester and build up, and just made more problems for the both of us, so that really didn't help at all whatsoever in the end. Um, the thing that she said talking about trying to get me to the workshop. The thing that got me to the workshop was we had already gone to mediation and which didn't go well, just based on kind of, you know, her demands and my demands. <laughs> and afterwards I sat down with her and like she said, our son has a lot of issues. And I was like, I don't want to drag this out for, you know, two or three years because there's no telling how long, how many years we have with our son. Um, and she said, well, I'll tell you what, if you go to the workshop with me, I won't fight the divorce anymore and we can just go through it. And I said, great, it's fine. Sign me up. So we did it. And that's what got me there. But it was, it took a lot of convincing. I didn't want to go. <laughs> it took and, 10 months. <laughs> but I also, you know, I guess kind of showed up with an open mind about it as well to the workshop. Maybe. <laughs> well, you didn't tell me that, but you probably did. Mm -hmm. um, I... I, I didn't know what to expect. Again, I know I've already said that, but I, I remember standing outside of my home at like 6.30 in the morning thinking and praying, I hope this man shows up to pick me up to go to this workshop because it wouldn't have surprised me if he would have bailed. Um, he had already actually said, okay, we'll try to go in um, May. And then he, some things happened and he said, no, I'm not going to go. And he said, I'll try to maybe go in June. And then June came and went, and then he said, okay, I'll go in July. And at that point, I was just thinking, who knows? And so he finally showed up, and he picked me up, and we drove there, um, and it was a very awkward, quiet, 45-minute drive <laughs> to the workshop. And, um, but we got awkward there, <laughs> and, um, and we got there, and there was all these other couples, and you could, honestly, you could sense the, the heaviness in the room. Nobody was crying. Nobody was arguing. You could see some couples that were getting along and talking, and there were couples like John Lewis and myself where we just kind of sat down and just waiting for the workshop to commence, and um, not knowing that was the beginning of the end of, of our story um, in terms of the strife, the affair, everything that was going on, um, and... 
I want to point out really quickly that I believe you were still in contact with the other woman, not necessarily texting at the workshop, but at the time we were at the workshop, they had not cut off the relationship. Um, so anyways, the first day, um, it was again, a long day, eight to six thirty, and they covered so many different topics. Um, I honestly don't remember what was really covered at this point. Um, but there was just a lot, a lot to take in. And I remember going for lunch. We had our lunch break. And I could just see life in his eyes. Um, for some of you watching this, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. Prior to that, there was just this emptiness um, that when he just looked at me, or even other people, I mean, other people noticed it, family, friends, that sort of thing. And I just remember seeing a light. He wasn't joking with me. He wasn't hugging me or anything like that. But he was just kind of the old John Lewis. We were able to talk about normal things. Um, and we hadn't done that in, in 10 months. And then day two. In day two, they spent a lot of time talking about affairs, limerence, and the, you know, the, the process of falling in love. And I remember um, driving home that day. And we sat in your car, I think, for almost two hours outside of my house. And I was just asking different questions. Um, there was a lot of things I, couldn't, I could ask, but I couldn't get answers because of... Um, some of the legalities. He could not talk about certain things. If he did, it would be incriminating because he was technically not supposed to be in contact with the other woman. And so I couldn't, I mean, I could ask him, but he wasn't going to answer. But I did ask things about leading up to him leaving and the affair and just trying to better understand. And um, I don't know if you remember this, but you did say to me about the workshop that day because I was thinking, well, how do you feel about it? What do you think? Um, and he said, you know, it's as if these people kind of read my mind, but John Lewis had never talked to them. Even though Kimberly kind of knew my story, Joe knew my story, um, John Lewis had never said to them, this is how I'm feeling. And John Lewis felt that no one could understand, not his parents, not his friends. Um, I don't even know the other woman. Um, really could really comprehend what you were, you were feeling at that time in terms of what you felt towards me and our marriage and all those things. And then when... Um, Joe Beam got up there and started speaking about his experience and just talking about what limerence is, I mean, the light bulb went off. And by day two, I remember having the, that long conversation in his car. There were no promises. There was no talk of reconciliation, but it was just kind of getting things out on the table for the first time. And that was huge. And I remember going inside and telling my mom, it does not matter if he comes back. I desperately want my husband to come home. I desperately want my family to be back together. My children deserve that. Um, and I know somewhere deep down John Lewis wants that, even though he doesn't re realize it yet. I said, but it doesn't matter because I have closure that I have, I have done everything in my power to fight for my marriage. Um, and then day three came along. And a lot of day three is talking about closure, forgiveness, um, things that you're going to need regardless if your spouse comes back or not. And I really had forgiven John Lewis. Um, that was, for me, a non-issue. Um, but closure was definitely something that I was you know, struggling with. But I felt like I had really already gained that by day two of the workshop and being confident in, in where I was headed. Regardless if he came back or not, I knew that I had done what I needed to do as his wife. And so we, we went to day three. We left. We said goodbye to Kimberly and Terry and everybody else. And we got in the car. And I remember kind of looking at you and going, okay, well, what did you think? And he he just kind of looked at me. It was nothing romantic, but he along the lines of, you know, I I want to try to make this work. I want to work on things. Um, what is that going to look like? And so at the workshop, they teach you how to go about reconciliation, if that's something that you choose to do. But he just kind of meant logistically, you know, where are we going to live? What, how are we going to explain this to our family? You know, all the things that kind of come with it. And to me, that those were minor issues. I didn't care if we lived, you know, down by the river. I just, I just wanted my husband back. Um, and, and the value that I saw in the workshop prior to going while attending and even after, was um, that I, I'm a believer, and I have been praying and praying and praying and praying, you know, Lord, please, please save my marriage, please convict my husband's heart, um, you know, and I knew, or at least I feel, that, you know, God was more concerned about my husband and their relationship um, and, and, and whatnot, but there was also practical things that I needed to learn, and that's what the workshop does. Um, it parallels, you know, us, if you're a believer, um, following, you know, what God's will is for your life or what you feel like God's laying on your heart in terms of standing for your marriage, maybe. 
Um, but there's a practical sense um, because people say, well, you know, we're supposed to love our spouse. Okay, but what does that really look like? You know, it's easy to do that when finances are great, the babies aren't screaming, um, you don't have to take out the trash, you know, all those things. But that's just not life a lot of the time. And so I really learned where my mistakes were, which is communication. Um, I tend to be a bully. I tend to <laughs> want to get my way, which still happens from time to time. But he's better about communi- <laughs> he's better about communicating in, in a kind, respectful way. This is what you're doing. This is how it's frustrating me. Instead of just flying off the handle. Or not even really flying off the handle, but just immediately being mad. Um, and so I really learned at, at the workshop, even still not knowing if he's going to come back, realizing, oh, this is what I did. Um, and I'll kind of let you share what was convincing for you or what was really the turning point, um, throughout those three days or what was said that made you really kind of go, uh, I don't know if there was, I mean, the whole weekend was convincing. I think the most interesting thing I got out of it was when we went there, I kind of walked in being like, well, nobody else is going to be going through the same thing we're going through. (coughs) Nobody else is going to understand what we're going through or nobody can relate to me and how I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, But we walked in, it was kind of the exact opposite. Everybody there working for the staff had had an experience that was equivalent or worse than ours, I guess. And then hearing stories of people that were there when they wanted to share, you don't have to share, but when you wanted to share what exactly it was that you went through, kind of sitting in the back going, well, if they can sit there and work through it, then we can sit here and work through it. Yeah. And I think the, we always knew that, Amber and I always knew that we were opposites of each other, mm-hmm. but we didn't know how to go about kind of working with each other on that. And allowing, and allowing the, you know, that to be a strength and not working against us. Right. And I think the the turning point from if there is going to be a tur- turning point, it's that it equipped us with the tools to understand what each other's strengths are and what it is that will, you know, overcook each other's grit, so to speak, and what it is that's going to fix things for each other. Um, and it's stuff that you know you feel like you would be able to work together on once you get out of the workshop. It's not Absolutely. like these unobtainable, unobtainable goals that... Or homework or yeah. these exercises, you know, stare into each other's eyes and give daily affirmations, which yeah. are which are great, I guess. But this yeah. is how... <laughs> but, you know, things that you can do on a daily basis that are applicable that you can be doing as you're making the kids' lunches and trying to get out the door for work or coming home from work and, you know, getting through the day. Um, and... And that was, sorry, something that he kind of touched on, which is, you know, you're not there to air out your dirty laundry. When we were there, no one knew, besides Kimberly Holmes and Joe, only because I had spoken to them before the workshop, that he had had an affair or was having an affair or had left. Everybody at the workshop within our group, because we kind of made friends with the people sitting next to us, and um, and we, we never really opened up about it because we just didn't have to. It's not that we didn't like them or anything like that, but that's just how we felt that we wanted to handle it. Um, and what was great about the workshop is that he was able to talk about things in a way that didn't, that wasn't bashing me, but it was productive um, and vice versa. You know, I was able to say, this is, this is what I'm needing, or this is what I want, or in terms of honoring my feelings, because a lot of the time, um, you know, I would, John Lewis felt actually that he was always giving in, but then I would feel the same way too. Well, it can't be both ways. Um, so we really were learning how to honor each other, even if we decided to cope or if he decided to co-parent, that this is how we're going to be able to have to operate. Um, and we can do it in a way that honors our children and respects them and, and having them the best and giving them the best childhood and situation upbringing, because that was what we decided and wanted to honor when we first had them. And that should, shouldn't change, even if you decide to, you know, leave your marriage. Um, lead, and I, Leading up to the workshop, I forgot to mention that I basically had to overcome a number of obstacles. Um, the only thing that I didn't have to deal with was travel because I am you know, from the area, so that was the easy part about the workshop. But in terms of getting my husband to agree to go to the workshop, um, that was a no. 
it, it, he told me for 10 months, no, I didn't, you know, I stood for my marriage, not because he offered me hope, um, but because I was just as determined as, you know, the third monkey trying to get on Noah's Ark. I was just going to do it. And, um, finances, um, I was a stay at home mom in the beginning. He had, um, redirected some, you know, his checking or his checks from work to a, a different bank account. So, I actually was the one who had to file for divorce. It was not John Lewis. Even though he was wanting the divorce, I'm the one who actually filed. And I did that crying. I did not want to, but I felt that the only way I could get his attention is if I had the legal system kind of step in and say, you can have the affair, you can leave your family, but there's a certain way that you're going to have to do this. So I had really no money. Um, I could have asked my parents. I didn't want to. They were already taking us on in their home. And... They, they were very supportive of me standing for my marriage. It didn't mean that they weren't frustrated. They weren't upset with John Lewis, but they knew the, they understood the big picture, which was our legacy as a family and the legacy for our children. And so I had to come up with the, with the $2,000 on my own at the time. And so I sold baby clothes. Once they grew out of them, I sold baby equipment. Um, I babysat with my children and somebody else's family. Um, I even had random donations the night before Christmas. Somebody dropped off $300 on my front door, and I never found out who that was. So just little things like that for 10 months that added up. And I just remember praying for 10 months, Lord, if you just can get me to this workshop, if you can just get him to say yes, um, I, I know there's hope. I knew there was hope, but I just knew once he said yes, we were, we were almost in the clear. Um, so I had to overcome a number of obstacles that a lot of you out there can completely relate to. Finances, an unwilling spouse, um, child care. You know, I still had my children that needed to be taken care of on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And, um, and you know, I had to call Johnny Cardwell and say, look, I don't have the money. I want to get to this workshop. Um, and he said, look, you know, we'll work with you. We have payment plans. Um, and, and he was kind enough to, to allow me to do that. Um, after the workshop, and John Lewis had said, um, you know, let, I want to try to work on things, you sort of kind of vacillated a little bit, um, or a lot. <laughs> um, and so for a couple weeks, I really thought it was heading in the right direction, and I think you did too. Um, but you hadn't cut off contact with the other woman, correct? Um, and so were you, were you intending to cut off contact before you officially came back, or was it just kind of this waiting game of, just kind of seeing where things landed. Intending to. Okay. See, I learned things every day. And um, and so so anyway, so for a couple weeks, it seemed like we were heading in the right direction. We were going to reconcile. Things just kind of went to a standstill. And um, unfortunately, that's kind of normal with, with the wandering spouse. And they're in limerence. And, you know, they have a lot to decide. And possibly grieving this death of this other relationship. I mean, that's a lot. Even though it's wrong. We all know that. I mean, he understands that. I know that. Um, but it's still at the time, those are valid feelings, valid emotions. And I had to stand, on, you know, on the side. And if I ever was given the opportunity to be a safe place, do that. I couldn't stand there and beat him up over the head. Um, and, and, and at that point I really didn't want to anymore. I mean, it was just, I was weary. I was weary. I was tired. I just wanted my family back. And then finally, about a month after things kind of were taken off the table in terms of reconciliation. He just texted me, Mr. Communicator over here, texted me Monday morning and basically said, I should have kept that text message, but he said, um, I want my family. I want to do this. Let's, I mean it. And I remember take like a vacation to the beach. Yeah. And he said, and we're going to take a vacation to the beach as a family. And he, you ended up moving back home two weeks later, um, October 2nd of 2015. Or fourth? Oh, see. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, and we're now at the point, and it's been like that for a while, probably for almost a year now, where it's as if nothing ever happened. Um, I talk about it with y'all every day. I email you. You ask me questions. And it doesn't bother me. I know I was kind of crying earlier, but it's just I'm crying because I'm happy. <laughs> Those are happy tears because our story really is a story of um, – Success. Hope. Um, beauty from ashes. And um, 
I was not this Joan of Arc figure who said, I'm going to, I'm going to get my husband. I was determined, but I, I did it for, he was gone for 355 days and I did it every single day crying. But when I was around him, I had to stop crying and I had to act strong and I had to try not to nag him and beg him. Um, and a lot of the time I was good about it. And then some days, you know, I had, I was weak about it and didn't follow through and wasn't listening to Joe or Kimberly. Um, but I, and I know John Lewis, we would not be able to sit in front of y'all and share this story if it were not for Kimberly and Joe and Alice and Johnny and Terry and everybody else at Marriage Helper. Um, I personally believe that, you know, God gets all the glory um, in our situation. However, Joe Beam in the workshop itself was a vessel for helping facilitate that reconciliation. And um, even after the workshop, I've definitely been slacking. I was eating my cupcakes per usual, but you know, the, the pies don't go away. Being a safe place for your spouse does not go away. Respecting your spouse does not go away. <laughs> and um, so that's what's so amazing about this workshop is that this is not something that you just apply and then you're done with. Um, it really is a, is a lifestyle. Um, and, and so um, that's really our story. Um, it was hard. It seemed impossible. Um, but it really took time. I you didn't want it to happen. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's our story is no really no different than any of your stories, whether it's an affair or control issues or anger or addiction. Those are just other symptoms of the, the other cracks in your marriage. Um, and whether you've been dealing this with this for a year or 28 years um, or you've already divorced and you're considering, could my spouse and I get back together? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, and you can do it if it's only you standing for your marriage, because that was me. I had to drag him to the 99 yard line and it was his decision if he was going to go to the end zone or not. Um, but it, you know, love is not fair. Sometimes life is not fair. And I had to really get over that and not have a pity party and say, okay, if I'm going to do this, this is how it's going to go. And I was not fighting my husband. I was having to combat just the negativity or the hopelessness or the, um, what seemed impossible. So trying to fight for your situation does not mean that you fight with your spouse every day and, te you know, over text message and email about the children and, and visitation. Um, you do it in, in another way that honors yourself and your feelings and your heart, but also um, allows your spouse to really reconsider things. So um, I just want to thank Kimberly and Joe and Alice and everybody at Marriage Helper because if it weren't for y'all, we would not be sitting here today and we wouldn't get to celebrate Christmas as a family. And so... Um, yeah, second Christmas back together. And I love him more than I ever have. <laughs> no, I really do. And um, and you you can get to the other side, It's a, but it's a choice. Um, so, you know, feel free to ask us questions or send them an email. Johnny is happy to answer questions um, if you're interested in the workshop. Um, they are um, trying to really help everybody with this holiday season. We know the holidays can be tough, um, and it's, it's hurtful and it's draining, but this is just a temporary season of life. Um, and there's more to come. So thank you all again and have a good night. All right. Thank you. Bye.